Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If I held in my hand the power to eliminate physical pain from the world, said Dr. Paul Brand, I would not exercise it. And just what qualifies him to say something so sweeping, so comprehensive? Just think of putting pharmaceuticals out of business. No need for aspirin, tranquilizers, anti-inflammatory steroids, or such medications. Well, obviously, the statement needs qualification. Who was Dr. Paul Brand? Why did he say that? The short answer, one of the 20th century's top researchers into what pain is all about. His fascination with the whole subject was the result of working with leprosy patients in India. Those whose bodies are afflicted with the disease lose all sensation and feel no pain. So are they ahead of all of us who know the biting sting of pain? Not in the least, according to Dr. Brand. While leprosy is rarely fatal in itself, the horrible effects of the disease produce disfigurement and often the loss of limbs. But even worse, there has been a centuries-old social stigma attached to the disease, separating those with the affliction from their loved ones or neighbors. In Old Testament days, the person afflicted with leprosy had to leave the city and live outside in a hovel with other lepers crying out, Unclean! Unclean! when anyone approached them. Dr. Brand's research demonstrated that it was not leprosy which caused the disfigurement, leaving the victim with a claw-like club of a hand or a foot which eventually had to be amputated. A leper's absence of pain proved not to be a blessing, but rather a curse, which allowed him to burn his hands or feet without knowing it, or walk on raw wounds which he could not feel. Eventually, Paul Brand came to the conclusion that pain is actually a great benefactor to humanity, a gift from God, not a curse, which allows us to know what needs to be done when we hurt. His book, The Gift of Pain, co-authored with Philip Yancey, is one of the most comprehensive and practical treatments of the subject I've ever encountered. It's almost ironic that I started reading the book the day before I pulled a muscle in my back that left me sleepless and restless for two weeks, striving to find some way to eliminate this wonderful gift of pain, which I would prefer would go away, and the sooner the better. Our culture today, however, has little tolerance for pain. Constantly we're bombarded with the message that better living comes through pharmaceuticals. Get rid of your pain and your discomfort. Take a pill. Subsequently, we want to live pain-free lives. Ask the dentist to deaden the tooth before he fills it. Make sure you get enough anesthesia so you don't feel the pain of childbirth. Silence the voice of pain no matter what the cost. When you have a toothache or your back hurts, you're completely alone. No one shares your toothache or your pain. You are orphaned. And subsequently, even describing it is difficult. What you think of as mild may be considered severe by another person. Cultures have vast differences as to the tolerance of pain. Paul Brand believed one of the failures of life today is failing to listen to our pain, striving to understand why we hurt, what we have done which could have been eliminated. I'll tell you one thing for sure. The next time I'm tempted to play Hercules and lift a heavy box without help, I'll think twice and quickly. I've heard the voice of pain, and while I'm still not convinced it's my friend, I am learning fast. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.